Guys, it seems like more and more these YouTubers, all of them, are just releasing the most dog shit of products at this point, right? The, the most cash grab items they possibly can. But I don't think that it was always like this. Back in the old days, like before monetization, whenever YouTubers couldn't make a million dollars off of every video they uploaded, they would make merch that actually had value to their fans. You know, you have people like Dan TDM, Dan and Phil, and like Jake Paul of them. I don't know about Jake Paul's book, but all of them released books, and they were at least creative and had value they were interesting when it came to their merch too it was all connected to their brand in some way like you had markiplier's mustache or jack septic eyes septic eye you know that you know the septic eye part of jack they don't call him jack septic eye for nothing you know the pewdiepie bro fist all this stuff it, it held value to the fans it was something that tied back into the channel so putting it on a t-shirt kind of made sense it was a part it was like adidas and their logo or nike in the swoosh uh, one of my favorite monetization or product things that old youtubers would release would be the YouTube Red shows. I mean, they weren't good, but goddamn, were they unique and interesting. You know, back then, the stuff that they would make actually had value, and it was creative, and it showed the type of stuff that you can do on YouTube that you can't do on cable TV. And it was like this, I think, for quite a while, right? From probably early monetization till about 2018 to 2019, when stuff started to change. Uh, and like basically any YouTube historical event, I think it happened because of Mr. Beast. I mean, come on, this dude basically owns the platform at this point, no matter how much bad shit that he does. Mr. Beast merch, I think, was a little bit different, uh, not only in its marketing, which I will get to, but in its presentation, right? I talked a lot about how old merch and old products had symbols that related to the YouTubers. Well, Mr. Beast stuff was a little bit different. Instead of a bro fist that was also the channel logo, it was Mr. Beast on a shirt, right? And, and it looked all right, and people wore it, people bought it. But then the, the other one that he would do would be uh, M Mr. Beast on a shirt, Right? And, and then, if he was feeling crazy out there, he'd put the same Mr. Beast but on a hat this time. The point is, is that the merch that Mr. Beast would make would be, for the most part, his name, right? Mr. Beast on a shirt with a different design on it. And it's not to say that these designs weren't creative, or that they didn't have soul in them, but they weren't tied back directly into the channel. But yeah, I mean, this stuff was cool, but it wasn't a bro fist shirt, right? It wasn't, it wasn't a Diamond Minecart comic book. You know how cool it was to have a comic book back then that literally had your favorite YouTuber in it? Either way, this was all right. Uh, but another thing that was different about Mr. Beast's merch was the marketing behind it. Oh my fucking god, could you not escape it. The marketing for his merch was just relentlessly, constantly in your fucking face. The entire video, it seemed like you were getting advertised to. And in early Mr. Beast days, like 2019, 2020, it, it kind of made sense, right? Like these videos, they're funded by these shirts. Guys, go buy these shirts so I can give homeless people money. You can't complain about that, right? But still, you're getting advertised kind of the same drip-fed designs that were probably made by one or two people almost in a guilty way where if you don't do it you're not helping him help homeless people so you gotta support mr beast and whenever i say it was everywhere i mean everywhere every single mr beast video even to this day is constantly feeding you plugs for the merch which did happen beforehand right i'm not gonna forget about the paul brothers but it didn't happen nearly as egregiously the other youtubers that actually made cool products the tv shows the books all this stuff that you know maybe took some sort of soul even they didn't fucking shove it down your nine-year-old goal it while you're watching Mr. Beast on your iPad with your fucking Cheeto finger. Another thing that shifted around this time, which I'm not gonna fully blame on Mr. Beast, was, uh, instead of putting your design or your logo, or God forbid, your name on a t-shirt, uh, you'd, you'd put it on a, a backpack, or, or pencils, or a, a suitcase, or, or a fucking wristband. Every single product that you could imagine that you could use on your day-to-day -day life was turned into a product, regardless of if it had anything to do with the channel at this point. If they could put their channel logo onto something, some product, Product, whether it tied to the channel at all, they would do it because it makes them money. And hey, that's the only reason that anybody does this internet shit, am I right, guys? I don't give a shit about you. Donate on this video. Give me a superstar while you're at it. Uh, and since Mr. Beast is so CEO-brained, uh, I feel like he was kind of the first YouTuber to step outside of just making merchandise or products related to the channel whenever he started to do Mr. Beast Burger, which I now am realizing this entire video is just talking about Mr. Beast. You know what Mr. Beast Burger was, and it was advertised even more than the merch was. But uh, the difference was that Mr. Beast Burger, unlike the merch, was absolutely terrible. If you've seen Eddie Burback's video on this, you know what I'm talking about. But Mr. Beast, instead of making actual restaurants and, you know, v physical locations to go to, uh, the cheaper way would be for him to just have people on Uber Eats just, just do it for him, right? Do all the work for him, and it's called Ghost Kitchens, and he's not the first person to do it. But oh my god, did he do it poorly, because the, the quality of some of the food that, that people were getting was 
absolutely insane and disproportional to the amount that he was advertising it. Uh, and around this time is whenever other creators started doing this type of shit too, started stepping out of the merchandise zone. I don't want to just dog on Mr. Beast. You know, you had people like Arak making the pizza sauce, which could be a violation under the Geneva Convention for all I know, but hey, it was shoved down your face a lot and it had very little to do with the channel. At least, I mean, you know, Mr. Fake over here, at least he like tried to implement it like, oh my, I like pizza. As if that's not what everybody likes. Anyways, and you know, you had, you had Feastables, which holy fucking shit, how many Mr. Beast products does there need to be? There's, there's shirts, there's hoodies, and now they're in retail stores at this point. And now there's a Mr. Beast burger, which is actually just cafeteria food. And then there's chocolate, but it's healthy chocolate. But then he changes the recipe and now it's not healthy and it's worse than Hershey's, even though beforehand he was advertising it as being better than Hershey's because I was the biggest competitor. Now, of course, by this point, like every single other big YouTuber in the world, they've now copied what Mr. Beast has done. And all of them are releasing their own products. You know, you got, you got prime hydration. You got all this shit. Well, the reason that I'm making this video and what inspired me to make this video was whenever I was a kid, right? If you watched a YouTuber, which every kid did, they had merch and you wanted it and you probably got it. This right here. Some of you might be able to recognize either from the background of my videos or from its original creator. Uh, this is an old Roblox's YouTuber's backpack. Uh, it's got cats on it, which were essential to the brand. He had a cat on his shoulder of his Roblox character. His name is Dennis. It also has the same colorway and his videos were directed towards kids, a kid audience. So having a backpack would make sense. I remember how excited I was whenever I got this. Whenever I got into about sixth grade, I got this. For those of you who don't know what this is, this is a 40 million subscriber milestone shirt of Mr. Beast that he signed. Apparently, apparently he signed it, which you can, you can barely even see it anymore. Whenever I got this, I was excited, but I'm not even lying to you whenever I say the first thing that I thought was, man, I thought the backpack was cooler because YouTuber merch used to be something special, right? It used to be the supreme and the designer of what kids would wear. But by this point, it was just the thing that you saw your YouTuber wearing that you saw him advertising. So you had to get it, but it was no longer, you know, a, a piece of their creation, right? A piece of their work. It was something that an entire team was behind at this point that had nothing to do with the channel. And this all hit a tipping point whenever recently Mr. Beast, I can, can, can you guys believe it? I'm talking about Mr. Beast. He released something called Lunchly, which has been dogged on by the entire internet by this point. And I decided that I wanted to do a video where I ranked all three Lunchly flavors because they're Lunchable ripoffs. And you know, I was going to put them in a tier list and compare them to Lunchables. But whenever I went to my Kroger, which is where they advertised that they were, they weren't there. And then I went to another Kroger and then I went to another. And then I checked walmart.com, Kroger.com, Aldi's, Albertsons, every single grocery store that you could think of. And they didn't exist. And I spent hours looking for these things and I never found them. What happened, right? Where, where did it go? Where, where's the soul in these products anymore? This, you can tell that lunch was only made to make money off of. And they can't even do that right because all of their stuff is made so efficiently, so quickly that they don't even do it right anymore. And they can't even get it into the stores that they promise it's gonna be in. I went to three of them, all right? I'm not over-exaggerating here. The point is, is that people used to care about the products that they sold to their fans who appreciated their pieces of art, their videos so much. And now it's these soulless endeavors and half the time they're just shitting on another company like Prime and Gatorade, like Feastables and Hershey's, like Lunchly and Lunchable. All of these are just showing about how much better that they are than the other product because now they have to convince you because these creators are stepping into these endeavors that they don't really know shit about but they know will make them money 